Hello everyone and welcome to Shelf Space. I'm your host Ross13 and today we are taking another step into the Masters of the Universe. This is the Master of the Universe Origins, Skeletor. This will actually be my first Skeletor figure, um, so that's kind of exciting. I never got one actually. I had a couple of bad guy figures but never any of the main ones, so this is pretty cool. Uh, but before we get into the figure itself, let's take a look at the packaging that it's still trapped inside. Like before we'll hand do this so we got new for 20 a reference to the new for 85 86 or whatever the retro style masters of the universe logo which i think looks pretty darn cool skeletor evil lord of destruction modern posing retro play we got skeletor himself inside you can just barely make out the pack and cock behind him plus some of his accessories on the back we have the nefarious Overlord Skeletor wants to control the power within Castle Grayskull. Includes comic. Yes, I just talked about that. Modernizing and celebrating the original 80s Master of the Universe action figures. Master of the Universe Origins gives the power to pose Eternia's greatest warriors as retro style figures or a new action packed battle positions. I think I've said this before. <laughs> Fit Havoc Staff into hand. I would certainly hope you could. Twist into powerful battle positions. I said that earlier. Also, that's a really weird way to say, you know, posability, but whatevs. Heroic Warriors, and we got He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, Tila, heroic warrior goddess, Man-at-Arms, heroic master of weapons, and then evil warriors, we have Skeletor, evil lord of destruction, evil in, evil warrior goddess, and beast man, savage henchman. It's weird seeing them refer to Tila and evil in as goddesses. That's different but i'm guessing that's maybe more reference to their original toy pack and comic bios but yeah not much else to see on the packaging so let's unleash this evil onto the land and see what it's all about and here he is all looking blue and evil <laughs> and he's pretty cool looking Though it's very obvious that they share a lot of parts with um, uh, He-Man. We'll do that comparison later. But yeah, he very much looks like a retro Skeletor figure, complete with, you know, the hood not going all the way down. And him looking very much like a buff bodybuilder. I do wish that maybe they had painted a little bit here, but again, they're trying to duplicate that retro style, so... Retro doesn't necessarily mean well-painted. He's also got the uh, sort of evil monster feet, which was fairly common on the, uh, the evil figures. But yeah, nice chunky action figure. Let's go ahead and take a look at articulation. On the head, we got a ball joint that allows for pretty decent amount of movement. Can tilt his head quizzingly. Goodness, I'm not getting any light on this guy. Maybe that's appropriate, but it makes it hard for you to see. But he can look up, he can look down, he can look side to side. And he's got some pretty nice paint apps on here. Basically green with like sort of a yellowish green on top of that in these just piercing red eyes. Very cool looking. The shoulders are the same as we saw in He-Man. So you've got sort of a disc hinge that connects into uh, the body at kind of a weird angle to be honest but it allows for full rotation around and up that way so you get kind of a natural range of movement even if you have to work at it a little bit elbows are single jointed but do allow for rotation they feel a lot nicer than they do on uh, he-man and then wrists are on that same sort of fancy style where you got a disc hinge there for side to side movement and a ball joint or post that allows for rotation within the wrist no ab crunch really but you do have waist rotation you can kick up a little bit not much single jointed knee that also has the ability to rotate around oh that's right and you can do splits a little bit with Skeletor not that he is known to do that 
got a boot cut which is a lot more severe looking than on He-Man's if I remember correctly and then you have ankles that can go back and forth and a little bit to side to side so pretty decent articulation but I mean that's the whole reason for this thing to exist is it's supposed to be a retro style action figure but with modern engineering to allow for modern posing let's see it's gonna stay up his ankles are a little loose though I think actually more it's his feet are a little bit on the small side because he's very bulky you know waist up <laughs> Accessory wise, he comes with two things. Three, if you want to be generous. First, we have his primary thing, the Havoc Staff. It's completely unpainted, but again, retro figure. And that just goes into his hand like so. So you can have him brandish that and cast spells, go, Nyah! 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 We have fun here. <laughs> then, he also has the other half of the power sword. Oop. As you can see, this one has little posts in it, or little holes in it, while the version that He-Man came with had posts. So, what you can do is, this is the first time I've done this, so we'll see how well it works. You can press them together, and there you go. They separate a little bit at the tip, but that's okay. And so now you have the full sword, and you can unlock the Jawbridge to Castle Grayskull and receive its power. So if you wanted to, you can go and put this in his hand like so. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> but yeah. He's not going to be displayed like that, though. He-Man gets the Power Sword, not Skeletor. So, if I do display it, it'll be like this. Or, you can sort of fake him doing some sort of, like, underhand grip or something like that over here. And have him hold it like this. Which looks particularly menacing, especially if you pair it up with the Havoc Staff. That's pretty cool. <laughs> the final thing he comes with is the same pack in comic as He-Man did. And this one didn't get glued into uh, the box, so that's nice. But it's the same story. Um, as I said before, I think I recognize the artist on this as maybe one of the artists for... Um, the uh, Plants vs. Zombies comic for Dark Horse, but I don't know for certain. I'd have to really look that up, and I haven't had a chance to. But still, it's cool to have pack-in comics. It's not something you see very much every day. Particularly since a lot of companies really prefer to have, like, trilingual or more packaging. Um, and Mattel isn't doing that, so... Which means they can do this. That probably means that in Canada they can't sell this, because it would have to be in French, too. Either that or they made a version that's both English and French, but that would look really weird, I bet. Comparisons! Bring him up here. Here he is next to his enemy, He-Man. We'll put the uh, power sword in his back. So yeah, they stand about the same size, and that's should be the case because they share almost all the parts i think the forearms and hands are a little are different the uh the lower legs are different heads are obviously different but everything else is pretty much the same so and that's true for the original human line and that was how they were able to crank out so many different figures without like charging an arm and a leg because they basically were able to reuse the same tooling over and over again. As some would say, this eventually led to their downfall for the original line because there was a sudden glut of characters 
and nobody was buying them. That and a live action movie that completely flopped, even though it's really fun to look at, um, didn't help matters either. But let's see, here he is also next to an HG 1144 scale Gundam, a Modern Deluxe. This is Siege Ironhide. And, again, a Zoid. <laughs> I wanted I could make him ride this thing. <laughs> I do think they actually have a, I think it's called Panthor, coming out for Skeletor in the near future, which is basically just um, Battle Cat, but purple and flocked. <laughs> Don't know if I'm getting that, though. Um, I know I have a Battle Cat on the way at some point, uh, but that was mainly because I had a Battle Cat back in the day, and I really wanted to kind of recapture that feeling. But yeah, overall, it's not a bad little figure. Um, you just gotta realize that they are trying to recreate a traditional retro style figure so things like modern style paint apps and like better ex uh, accessory count and stuff that's to, something that you need to think about it's not going to be like a modern figure but this hits all the nostalgia buttons for me and i don't think i'm going to go super wild on this series I may pick up Man in Arms at some point. I may pick up Orko because that was another one I had. Um, I got Battle Cat on the way. And really, that's all who I really feel like I want to grab based on who they've shown off so far. But now I think I'm just starting to ramble. So let's go ahead, cut this off. And this has been a review. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Check the description below for links to my storefront where you can get official shelf space t-shirts and more. And yeah, thank you again and I'll see you the next time you invade my shelf space.